Hey guys, how are you doing? It's Simon again. Hi and welcome to another AnyScat Secrets tutorial. Today I'd like to show you how to import DWGs, AutoCAD, DWG or DXF via the standard import translation. And there are two specific cases. One of them is a logo that you import and you want to make it scalable because you don't want to modify this. Uh, I've created this one in Illustrator for example, that's why I've generated DWG. And the other case is a sketch maybe that you've exported from AutoCAD or however, which you want to convert to a driving sketch. But I'm just going to focus on this situation now and do the driving sketch thing in another separate video. Anyway, let's start. Create a new file and import your curves via file, import, DWG, AutoCAD. Here we are. I'm going to select my DWG. And it's important now to choose whether you want to have it within your work part now, within this empty part or a new part. Of course, it's work part. And another very, very important setting below options, which is by default, in my case, set to parts. If you have blocks within your DWG or DXF, NX would create separate parts for all of these blocks. It's a kind of assembly you would create. And I don't want this. I want a single part for that. So I choose groups and Enable my preview to make sure everything's fine. And I'm going to finish this via middle mouse button. Files are imported now. And as I've decided to create groups, you can see our group below here. That's a standard group with an NX, which can contain curves and any other kind of objects independent from which kind of feature is being used. So it could be a feature based object as well. And to make all my things visible, I'm just going to double click. It's not on a disabled layer so it is visible if you can't see it anyway it must be on a layer which is not visible so make sure layers are enabled anyway i'm going to create my sketch now and select my top plane therefore middle mouse button to apply my command and the profile starts and if you want to fit your things now you should close the profile first because double click would mean you draw something this is what i'm not going to do middle mouse button will end my profile and you can use a right mouse button and drag it to the lower left fit instead of double clicking. Anyway, I'm going to close my profile with my middle mouse button. Here's my curve and you cannot select it because my filter is set to with an active sketch only, which is perfect because I don't want to select external objects. How do we proceed? There are two possibilities. We could now project our curves, but we would create a copy, whether associative or not, which I don't want to do. I want to cut and paste my objects. That's why I'm going to use below more add curves. And if you just draw a rectangle now, you can see below here, it's 18 objects being selected. And you can see that's all my objects in here, 18. But when you count, you will see it's only 10 objects. So there must be some kind of overlapping curves in here. How do you find out what curve is available twice? Well, you can select manually like this or use a checkmate test, for example, to find out whether there are overlapping curves, however, or any other kind of mistakes. But I'm going to focus on DWG import and converting to sketch. That's why I selected manually like this. You can see it's 10 objects and middle mouse button will end your command. Now you have to read and don't hit no because if you hit no, NX would create some auto dimensions, which I don't want to have because it's 1104 constraints, which are needed within my sketch. How do I get my sketch fully constrained now, which is necessary, of course? That's pretty simple. I do it with uh, sketch groups and therefore I select all my objects, right click and create a new sketch group. And here we have a couple of options. First of all, the name, of course, and the group content, whether it's normal, rigid, unique, or scalable. Scalable is the choice I want to make because I want to define one dimension to drive the overall width of my content, and it will be scaled unique. It could be rigid, um, then it's kind of fixed, but I want it scalable. If I hit OK now, you can see four constraints remaining. Now I'm going to draw a rectangle for my outer dimensions. I only need one of them, but it helps a lot to have a rectangle instead. And if you create your constraints now, like tension constraints like this, you can see my object is going to move. And if I do it twice and a third time, 
you will see it's gonna rotate. So it is grouped and it's kind of rigid, but it's still scalable and the possibility of rotation is still there. So to avoid this, do not select your curve, select one of your poles instead and hit fixed. And of course, one pole is not enough. To avoid rotation, you have to do it twice. I got my two constraints now, which I'm gonna delete later on and create my tangencies now. So I got my constraints here and the sketch is fully constrained. Hmm. But I want to move it to my origin. How is that possible? It is fixed. You can't move it and you can't scale it. So I have to delete my fixes. And I got degrees of freedom now. And there's something else I'd like to do. I'd like to put the rectangle into my group. It's only the logo as you can see. And if the group was not active, you can right click a group and activate it. If it's active and you create something, it will be part of the group. You could have several groups as well, and those groups can also contain dimensions. And you could have several groups as well, it's only one group required here, but anyway, if you have several groups, you could, for example, put your dimensions into one group and easily hide all your dimensions or parts of your dimensions, which you maybe don't need for constraining, however. If this is active and you create something, it will be part of the group. Anyway, I'm gonna disable this and double click it to get access to my selection because this is the easiest way to afterwards put things into your group. And now you can see everything is part of my group. Pretty cool. But it has to be horizontal again. And now I can move my overall group to my origin like this. Last thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna create a dimension like this to control the width of my logo. The sketch is finished, it's fully constrained, it's driven by an expression, I'm gonna finish my sketch. And now I'm able to delete my curves, but anyway, if you have a look at this group here, and you select, you can see, it is the external curves selected and your internal curves as well. They're still part of the group, and part of this group. And the first thing I'd like to do, I'd like to ungroup this, if you right click the group, ungroup, it is deleted and now I'm going to delete my external curves and double click to fit everything into my screen. Here we are. There are a couple of possibilities now. You can project this or extrude it. However, I'm going to show you how to extrude it. And there are two possibilities now. You can use curves and group or feature curves. Both of them are or seem to be stable. If you use feature curves, and if you modify a sketch, it will be recognized by the extrude automatically, no problem. But if you use curves in group and select your group, maybe here, it's gonna work, first of all. If you modify your group by adding additional curves, it's gonna be updated automatically, no problem. But there's one thing I'd like to consider. I'm gonna therefore copy and paste my sketch. Copy and paste it to another plane like this. Just the sketch. And if I replace now, you can see that Annex will ask you for a new set of curves. And usually, if my extrude is referenced to feature curves instead like this, and you replace your sketch, it's not gonna ask you for curves. Why? Well, you can have several groups. It is possible. So it's not a very unique selection referencing to a group. It works if the group is updated, everything else will be updated when there is a relation to a group, but it's not gonna work if you replace things or copy and paste things, you might receive problems. But anyway, I don't think if you don't replace it, the group thing is pretty cool and pretty stable and I hope this is something new for you. I use it a lot when importing things into my sketches. You should keep sketches modular as small as possible as well, so normally it's not my intent to create groups within huge sketches. I prefer creating lots of sketches instead. That's much more stable and reusability is much better. 
But anyway, sketch groups are pretty cool when it's about importing logos or similar. And when it's about hiding dimensions, for example, because you can also collect your dimensions and hide them while hiding the group that is possible. I hope you're satisfied with this tutorial and I'm going to do another one about importing DWGs, which I'm going to convert to a driving sketch that includes dimensions and constraints, however, with a lot more curves than those. If you like my videos, I'd appreciate you to like them, of course, share my videos if you want other people to listen to what I've got to say. If you want to be informed about new uploads, which I do several times within a week, hit the subscribe button and I will see you soon. Goodbye.